All right, hello again, everybody. Welcome back to Airbus 320 Tech Talk. What do all those buttons do? Thank you again so much for joining me. The topic of today's discussion is going to be the gear position indication lights on the A320 flight deck. But before we get started, as always, if you like what you're hearing and seeing, please hit that like button, hit subscribe, leave comments down below. All that kind of good stuff just helps me keep the channel moving forward. So I appreciate it if you already done that for me. So I uh, hope everybody is still staying healthy out there with everything going on in the world right now. We are going to jump in and bring up the slide that I've got for you today, and we'll, we'll start on today's discussion. And so, as I mentioned, uh, we have uh, we finally moved off all the, the status display segments there that I wanted to talk about. So we're moving back up here to this section on the forward pedestal area, and we'll work our way down in the next couple segments. So we're, we'll talk about the first area here, and that is the, the landing gear position light section here. So. Very simply, you know, this is a, a place that we can go to to just get a real quick visual, um, you know, verification, let's say, of, you know, where exactly our gear, our landing gear are at at a given point in time, either they're up or they're down, uh, or they're either locked or unlocked, you know, out of position that we're asking them to be in. And, you know, one thing that I, I've found really interesting about the Airbus is just the fact they've decided to keep this as a design characteristic of the airplane. I mean, a lot of the other modern planes these days, they've completely done away with this, this old, you know, let's say like manual or analog style of uh, data output here. And it's just all lives on the, the electronic screens that we've got in our flight decks these days. So it's interesting, like I said, that Airbus decided to keep that there. And one thing I can tell you just as a, you know, as a general pilot thing, I mean, I've, I've actually found this to be a pretty nice thing is, you know, crazy as it sounds, um, you know, we, we're kind of creatures of habit and we, you know, we still go back and do a lot of these things as pilots that we did since day one, we were learning to fly airplanes. And that was always a big thing for us. You know, when you're training, you finally get to the chance to get a, into a retractable gear airplane. You know, the, the biggest threat that a lot of folks, you know, faced, and there have been several accidents, you know, attributed specifically to this, but, you know, folks, you know, forgetting to put the gear down. Now, you know, most, most of the time, you know, most aircraft have several different ways to, you know, alert you to this fact if you weren't looking at your panel or whatever. But all that I'm trying to say, the only point I'm making here is that I still find myself glancing over, you know, a couple times, you know, coming down the last you know, five miles of an approach, let's say, just, you know, continuously verifying, you know, once again, okay, yeah, our, our gear is still down and, and everything is good. Is it just, it's ingrained in your head. So just, you know, one one kind of funny thing to, to express to you that, that hasn't left me in all these years of flying airplanes. So um, anyways, uh, you know, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the indications themselves at first, um, you know, and then we'll, we'll I want to bring up the slide that shows the status display section. We'll talk just about a few more elements of the system that I wanted to make mention of, and then we'll wrap it up with the Q&A section today. So just right off the bat here, you know, the, the first thing that we see here, looking at this slide at this point in time, I mean, this was taken when the airplane was sitting at the gate. So the landing gear is obviously down in the locked position. And therefore, we have the, the three green lights here indicating, you know, the left main, the right main, and the nose gear. And, you know, it's... Um, Pretty simple and straightforward. I mean, there's not a whole lot to, to tell you other than that. If you were to, you know, become airborne and you raise the gear and everything was just all normal, all these lights would be out. Uh, but there is one other indication that you would see at various points of time. And I'll, I'll bring up that slide where we did a lights test just to kind of to point that out to you. And that is just the, the indication up here where we get this red. Um, it's kind of hard and you know, a little little blurred out in this photo here that I took, but it's just a, an unlocked light. It just says UN... Um, LK. Um, so all that this tells us essentially is that, you know, at this point in time, the gear is not locked in the position that we're asking it to be in. So let's say that, you know, once again, you, you take the airplane off, you know, from the ground, you're, you know, leaving like you do every day and you, you reach over, you raise the gear handle. Well, there's a period of time that the airplane sees, okay, well, now the gear handle is in the up position, but I'm, I'm also recognizing that they're not locked in the up position. So something doesn't, you know, seem right here. So I'm going to display this unlocked condition. And that's quite literally what's happening. The gear is not locked in the up position or it doesn't agree with the, the gear handle position, you could say. And the same thing, of course, happens in reverse. You know, when you're landing, you, you reach over, you put the lever in the down position, the airplane sees that. And there's a period of time that the gear are transiting. Um, until they get, you know, into their down and locked position. And those lights will go out at that point in time just to let you know that, you know, everything has functioned as advertised and, you know, you're in a safe condition to continue your landing in that case. So very simple, very straightforward, not a whole lot more to tell you about just the lights up here that we see. One other thing I wanted to make mention of also, and I'll bring up the, the slide, as I mentioned, that it just looks at the, the status display of the wheels here. We have these indications here, these, these triangles essentially. And, you know, one thing that we can actually tell from looking at this page is a little bit more in-depth information about what the system is telling us. So 
first of all, one thing to tell you is that you know being an Airbus, there's a computer for absolutely everything. And you know, in the case of the landing gear, we actually have two computers that, of course, back each other up, and they're redundant, and they're cross-checking one another. Um, and these are the the LG CIUs, or the landing gear control and interface units. So they they sequence all sorts of you know different things that happen and you know when you're raising and lowering the landing gear and they'll, they'll look out to make sure that you know other components of the airplane actually are agreeing with you know what should be happening when the gear is either up and down it gets pretty technical in depth there's actually a whole chapter in the fcom that talks about all the different systems that are just looking specifically at what the gear is doing to derive various actions or allow you as the pilots to do other things it's it's really quite interesting but all that i wanted to make mention of here is just that you know, if those lights were burned out, you could, of course, come to this page here. As long as you have these green triangles indicating here, um, you would, you know, you'd be more than assured that you had, you know, a good, you know, you know, down and locked position of essentially of, you know, your landing gear. If you're, you're ever unsure about it, you need to, of course, land the airplane. And these, these colors will actually change depending on what the, the two LG CIUs are seeing, if they agree or disagree. Uh, they'll change, you know, to, to red or, or amber, or there'll be X's there if they're just not receiving anything. So it's just, like I said, there, there's a small chapter in the book that will kind of pull apart even further to tell you exactly what's going on, you know, if you were to see this different color coding in your system there. But just, like I said, I, you know, the, the biggest point that I wanted to make here is just to, to drive home that point that there's these two extra computers that are looking out and monitoring the whole system there and uh, feeding these indications, you know, to, to you know, what we're seeing in the flight deck there. So... Uh, I hope that all makes sense to you guys. That's all I had for that specific section on the panel. And like I mentioned, uh, we'll jump in and do the Q&A section today. So this was a few weeks ago. I had a, a reader or a viewer rather uh, by the name of Young Bandit. So thank you very much for tuning in. I uh, appreciate you watching. Um, and he had a question about uh, the lights position switches up here. So I'll, I'll bring this up while I'm talking about it. But um, I'll read his question specifically. He said, um, I was just try I was here trying to figure out about the nav lights. I know about them and what they are for, but I don't know about why there are two switch positions there. So um, I think he was referring specifically to, the, to this section here. And if you look closely, we've actually got a, a three position switch here. We have off, one, and two. And if you recall in the A320, there's actually two light bulbs that live out at the wings there. And you'll you'll alternate each flight leg between the number one and the number two bulb. And of course, this is just, it provides, um, you know, a longer, you know, lifespan, let's say, of each bulb. And, and of course, it provides a level of redundancy, you know, to, to always have one that's there, you know, in backup. If one were to burn out, you know, you've got a, another set completely ready to go on a different, you know, kind of subsystem, let's say. So that's that's why you have that number one and two position there. Remember, you know, if, if one of these lights was burned out and uh, you didn't have this option, you might actually be stuck somewhere, you know, if you didn't have the means to replace the light. So this is just a way that they can, you could defer like a part of the system, just switch over onto the other switch, switch position and go off, you know, flying wherever you needed to get to, to get the, um, get the maintenance performed to fix that. So um, I hope, hopefully that uh, explains your question there. Um, but if it doesn't, please, uh, you know, let me know. And, and while we're there too, um, I, I think I might've got confused, you know, when I was fielding this qu question, but um, just to, to hit the point also, you know, on the, the landing light section here, of course we have a left and a right switch. And if you remember the, the landing lights on the A320, they're actually these like motorized things that you know, they, they fold out from underneath the wings there. So just like everything else on an airplane, you know, there is a level of redundancy. You know, the landing lights are, you know, one of the things that you're most definitely going to want to have if you're ever in night conditioning, you're trying to land, of course. So, you know, if one of those motors was burned out, if, you know, one of the lights was burned out, it just gives us a way that we can operate, you know, each one of these lights independently from one another. So we, we still have some means of illuminating, you know, the runway down below us, um, you know, for obvious reasons. So, there's the reason you know, we you know, have two different switch positions there. And there's, of course, an MEL or a way that we can defer one side of these switch positions. And you know, also an interesting thing along with this, too, is that you know, if one of these was an operative and it was, you know, you, you wanted to reduce the drag, of course. There's actually a 1% fuel penalty that gets applied if you have to fly around with one of these lights in the, the, um, the down or the, the out position. Uh, and like I mentioned before, you can actually hear the sound of the wind going by these things. It's pretty interesting. Is they, they do actually add a little bit of drag to the airplane. So you know, once again, just the fact there's two of them, if one of them is an operative, you could have one up, one down, or you know, whatever you needed to do just to you know, proceed on your day in, in the most efficient manner uh, possible. So 
that's all I've got for everybody today. Uh, thank you again for tuning in. Hope everybody, like I said, is staying safe out there. And uh, we'll talk again real soon.